Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Frame. While the world is taking giant strides towards adopting greener energy solutions, fossil fuels like petroleum, coal, and natural gas from the oil and gas industry are still primarily responsible for keeping the lights on. They supply up to 84% of the world's energy. One of the most important aspects of the industry is what's known as ground drilling. Indeed, oil companies spend billions of dollars on giant offshore and onshore rigs drilling to reach fossil fuels deep in the ocean. Onshore drilling is a bit more traditional. Nowadays, large machines like the LB44 are changing the game. Using an assortment of deep foundation equipment, this highly mobile rotary drilling rig is versatile enough to tackle almost any job. There are different methods of breaching the Earth's crust, as well as different types of drilling machines used by different companies, depending on the situation, location, and purpose. One example is rotary drilling. This is where a sharpened bit is forcefully rotated into the Earth. Like a big screw, the threading on the bit facilitates deeper drilling as well as the removal of extracted debris. The deeper the drilling auger needs to go, the bigger the machine that will be employed. Some of these machines are basically mobile cranes. Only instead of going up, they force their way down. Another main method used in onshore drilling utilizes what's known as a percussion rig. This is where a drill bit hammers back and forth like a small jackhammer, chiseling into the earth rather than cutting through it. But these conventional rotary drills and tools are gradually fading away. Some companies like Terellian have even designed rotary percussion systems, or RPS, that combine the best of both methods into a single, solid drill shaft. RPS combines low-pressure percussion and rotary drilling to create a smoother and more efficient drilling operation while reducing drill vibration and steel torque. RPS provides a higher rate of penetration, straighter holes, a smoother drilling operation, and less tendency to bend drill steel, no matter the hardness of the soil. Rotary percussion tools are so easy to run that they need no more than a minimum of 85 PSI air, or 95 PSI recommended. When the RPS tool comes in contact with the hard soil, the mandrel closes and activates the piston with air pressure. The piston then moves upward and downward as the air pressure changes, enabling it to strike repeated blows on the mandrel. The pressure on the mandrel is transferred through a drill bit to the forward formation, causing the studded cutting structure to rotate and fracture the ground formation ahead. They can drill up to 10,000 feet deep. While onshore drilling structures are minimal, offshore drilling is an extremely expensive and complex process. Since oil is typically located far from the shoreline, this type of drilling usually involves the construction of entire floating cities. These offshore rigs vary quite widely in designs, with substructures ranging from light tethering to cement or steel beams. There are even mobile platforms located on large ships, which are known as Floating Production Storage and Offloading Vessels, or FPSOs. Because of the increased depth, weather, and waves, offshore drilling is far more intense and often much more dangerous. In the hunt for oil, gas, and minerals, a three-step process needs to be utilized in order to eliminate potentially expensive guesswork. The first step is exploration. This involves taking samples of rock and soil from different depths all around a potential site. These samples are then appraised in step two. The appraisal is typically done by a geologist or other expert who can properly identify the signs of fossil fuel or mineral deposits. By looking at the multiple samples, they can also determine whether or not the potential source is big enough to warrant a full-scale drilling operation. 
If the answer is yes, the company will initiate step three, which is production. Of course, the size and scope of the operation will depend on how viable the find is. If enough of the desired resources are found, entire permanent structures and even small towns may be built around the site. In today's world, oil is far from being the only asset lying beneath the Earth's surface. Therefore, companies producing these machines tend to adapt them to specific minerals found in the regions or countries where they are to be used. The global drilling market is already a force to be reckoned with. The global offshore drilling market size stood at $31.2 billion in 2018 and is projected to reach almost $57 billion by 2026 exhibiting a massive compound annual growth rate of 7.9% during the forecast period. North America is currently the largest market, but the Asia-Pacific region is catching up quickly. A big part of what's driving this surge in investment is the development of newer, better land drilling machines. Another factor is the increased access that smaller companies have to drilling rigs. This takes some of the market share away from well-known major organizations like Exxon and BP and empowers smaller teams to develop their own land leases. Though the world is gradually drifting away from oil and natural gas, the need for drilling will always remain, thereby necessitating the creation of better drilling machines than what we have today. That's the end of this feature on the frame. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to catch us on our next exciting video. See you next time.